Sitting next to me is a man who told me in poker that a pair of deuces and a gun beats a full house, but in plumber's poker, a flush beats a full house. And he is Bruce the Blog. Well, that was a very good way of flushing out the opening, Bazo. And I, haven't you used that one before? No. No, okay, anyhow. And he's Bazo, and you're watching Bruce the Blog. Still goes Bazo! Round nine between Bruce and I. Hats off to you. Yes. <laughs> Okay, well, we're on the air, Bazo. Who would have thunk it? Anyhow, hello, everyone. What's going on with those glasses? What's going on with them? They're not much, but these are uh, glasses that, if you can see, folks, they actually say 6-0. And let's just uh, leave it at saying I've already wore these for that occasion, and I won't tell you how long ago. But, but you know, I've been thinking, Bazo, about writing a blog called It's Enough to Make You 60. Oh, well, anyhow, um, and we we're up. Working. Hold it before you start that because we got this a whole bunch of shameless promotions. You're doing the clock. Yeah, I'm doing we the clock. Oh, we have five. We're going to do it starting now. Yes, we I thought it was only for the top. No, no, no. Okay. Starting with even the shameless promotions, or else we'll do a whole show of shameless promotions. That's true. Okay, I'm starting. Everyone, I'm starting. We're over there now. Yeah. The stopwatch. You get, you get whiplash. We have to have. Uh, Maybe we should have EMT outside in case we get whiplash with these cameras. Anyhow, okay, we're starting it now. Yeah. Okay. And we're brought to you, as always, by the Penny Saver and parent company Chase Media Group. And we thank, as always, Carla Chase and Frank Rich for putting us up and putting up with us. And our local author. And Frank Rich is, is the local author of uh, Raising Father. Go to RaisingFather.com. Uh, it's very well done, and uh, I would encourage you to look into it and buy the book. Okay, and... Second shameless promotion. Oh, you want to do all the shameless promotions at once? Yes, yeah, second right. shameless yeah. promotion. For those of you not watching us right now, you can also see us right. <laughs> on yeah. Sunday nights yeah. at 9.30 and on Wednesday mornings at 11.30. So on channels 15 and 74. For whatever right. system you're not right. watching us on now, right. you cannot watch us then. Right. And um, that, that reminds me of, you know, that old joke like, if you're not here, raise your hand. Right. right? That's the same type of thing. Um, yes. OK, so let's get let's go through all the shameless promotions. And we, we just want to offer a kind of a postscript, even though it's up front, which is sort of an oxymoron, that uh, We'll just say that we've actually been encouraged, Bazo and I, to really, you know, be even more outrageous. I mean, tasteful and responsible, but, you know, right, outrageous. Uh, yes. so, um, so if we seem to be acting that way, it's not your TV set that's broken and it's not your imagination. It's us. Okay. So, shameless promotions. Um, I recently got finished uh, in this hand-to-mouth one-act uh, that we did Wingless Angel, right? right. In which I wore this, this hat, so that's one reason for that hat. And then Hand to Mouth Players, which is a very nice group, you know, a, the a community theater group, also is doing old time radio theater. And so in October, the second and third weekends in October, uh, this site, the uh, location still to be decided, but it's basically going to be in libraries, local, like Hendrick, Hendrick Hudson Library is where the one act plays uh, were uh, shown in late August. And this will tour libraries. So anyhow, Bazo, believe shows it or not. Shows like this are long overdue. Yeah. What, shows like what? That you're going to be doing. These plays like this are long overdue. They should be in a library. Oh, jeez. Okay. <laughs> you're such a card. Anyhow, um, so I'm playing Costello, and who's on first? So much what? for your diet. Now you've got to put all that right. weight you so, lost. Well, you know, they, well, that's what they made pillows for. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm going to be Costello, when, who's on first, with Gary Simon, a very, very good actor, and he's, he's uh, an officer in these community theater groups, uh, YCP Theater Works, Hand to Mouth. He's going to be Abbott. And then I'm also playing Fred Allen of the famous 
a classic radio comedy show, Allen's Alley. Well, I'll give more than that, but the famous Benny Allen feud yeah, with no, stuff right, of legend. Right, and in the that's right. Uh, thank you for mentioning Jack that. Jack Benny. Right. In the, uh, in the episode that we're recreating, Jack Benny is in the episode, yeah. and, I'm, and I'm, I'm Fred Allen bantering with Jack Benny. It's, they were the yeah. stuff of legend oh, they were, of feud. Yes, they I, were, yeah. I, uh, Years ago. That's when, what made Jack Benny famous, yeah. isn't it? Right. No, oh, he was already famous. They, they it just started by accident between yeah. those two. See, Allen. By the way, we've, we've already done three minutes, 17, 18 seconds. Okay, okay. then right. I'm not going to give the history right, no, of Benny But, but all I want to say, as long as we were, uh, to finish off that topic, for those of you of a certain age who remember Johnny Carson, another immortal TV star, one of the most influential TV he personalities ever. Jack right. Benny. We, no, Jack Benny was a huge influence on Johnny Carson's right. uh, comic style. Yes, right, yes, right, it was. Right. Now, the next shameless promotion. For those of you oh, wait, again, so Should I start this again? No, we got time. You said only three yeah, we got, in. Yeah, we got time. That's why I have a stopwatch. Right. But I'm saying, I know what the time is, but should I restart it? You better restart yeah, it. Yeah, I think, I think right, now I have to because it just stopped. Okay. All right. Our next shameless promotion, by the way, folks. Uh, again, if you're not watching now, you can watch these shows on NCN Local TV. How many episodes we got up we now? We have more than 20, and we're adding new episodes, folks, just about every day. We're and, adding. So, and where, you know, so where, by the time you see the show, NCN it'll be probably more TV. than 25 episodes. Where do they find NCN then Local Then you go to TV. YouTube, you know, YouTube.com, if, if you don't frequent that channel already. It's YouTube.com, and you just... Type in the search box, NCN Local TV. And it'll but come you up. can also get it on NCN Local. On our website, ncnlocal.com. Yes, right. right. You can go that way, too. Yes. Okay, your next shame yeah. was promotion. Okay, well, I, wa I want to uh, apparently I want to sort of uh, give some stuff here. You know, the, well, well, that's not really a shameless promotion. Um, the Harrison uh, A. Parr Field of Dreams yeah, Foundation. That's, no, that's, we'll get to that, too. But I want to give props to our director, Richard Redmond, who, by oh, the way, yes. Who, by the way, since we moved into this to the Peekskill Studios this year, has been doing a great job for us. He, he's really, actually, he's improved the show with uh, you know graphics and what he does in the control room. And Richard also uh, writes uh, plays and and puts on plays, and he has his own cable show that plays the thing. And so uh, I'm going to. He's he's very kindly and generously asked me to be on one of them, a wo woman's wiles that he adopted adapted. Um, so I'm going to play, uh, I think it's his brother is the character, um, and that'll be fun. I mean, you got to lose the weight you put on for costume. Yeah, I know, right. I'm going to be like yo-yoing, as they say, right? I'm going to be yo-yoing. So, um, and then I recently, you know it was a lot of fun? I recently um, did uh, MC work for a new organization, Yorktown Alumni Association. They're alumni of Yorktown High School. Uh, in this particular case, uh, it was August 18th, Saturday night at Yorktown Stage. They had alumni who play music, you know, who are musicians and play in cover bands playing 60s and 70s rock and roll. So that was a lot of fun, too. We have another shameless promotion. Bruce Goes Bazo on Facebook. Yeah. Find us there, like us. You'll always see updates of his blog, my blog, and every time they uh, right. put a new show yeah. online. And you know something? Before we lose the audience, we better start talking about other things <laughs> instead of shameless promotions. Well, we can I, always go back to that. But this would be like right. somebody putting on a 30-minute sitcom and getting five minutes of commercials before the sitcom started. So let's... Well, by the time this show airs, the political conventions... Yeah. Okay, I'm going to restart this. Yes. Go ahead, yes. You better set that for seven minutes this well, time. Well, okay. The political conventions will be starting, the Republicans and then the Democrats. Yeah. And I should have a column out that you t titled uh, uh, The Blame Game. Yes. Should be out uh, in the penny saver that week. And I w and when I w sent you the uh, draft of the column, you had sent me some replies that you w were curious about. Uh, we start off here, I start with the column and I'll go through it very quickly. Why won't candidates stick to the issues? The answer, because voters don't want them to. Candidates are reactionary. Give the public what it wants. Right. Yes, I'll give you a comment after, because each one you had comments yeah. after. Okay. Gas is at $4 mark again. Let's accuse Romney of not paying taxes without a scintilla proof, and the media will carry that message. Think about it. It was not far that far ago when Bush was president and gas prices were going through the roof. Every day the press reminded you of it. There was a clock. There were columns. Now you don't hear a thing about it. It's the, the, What you hear about is when did Romney meet, leave Bain Capital? Which and, has died down. But yeah. Yes, but still... And here you are. This is this was your reply to me right there. No, I, well, I remember what I said, what I wrote, and, and what I was saying uh, to Bazo in his column 
You know, if you use Word, why am I looking over there? <laughs> if you use Word, you know, you may know that when you write something in Word, you can then, let's say an editor, can then add comments in the margins. So that's what I was doing with this column. And my point was, if uh, in this particular column, uh, as Bezos said, titled The Blame Game that he authored, if he's saying that uh, the media is reporting or covering or obsessing over things like Romney's taxes or when he left Bain Capital, um, and that's what the public wants, doesn't that mean that the public is not very enamored of Romney? Doesn't that, isn't that what that means? I think when you have a template to bang somebody like, we're going to talk about this, because all these things, these, these distractions that are not right. re germane really to what's going on out there, come every time the, the, the bad economic news is announced. Uh, Romney's taxes, again, hit the forefront of the news today. Uh, well, he, well, and now he has come out saying that without releasing all his tax paperwork, which who the heck's going to look at that anyhow? You know, he did oh, say... Oh, well, the opposite research team would love uh, No, I'm, I don't mean that. I mean, the average person is, you know, they're too busy making a living and feeding their family to be looking at somebody's tax returns for 10 years, other than their own. So Romney did come out and say, oh, I went back and looked at them, and I did pay an average of, what was it, 13%. Right. Yeah. Okay, so let's... I mean, you know something? To me, that's not, that shouldn't even be as big a presidential election issue what, as it what, is. What, what should bother you, yeah. because of your brethren in the media, is the hypocrisy. Well, Charlie well, Rangel... Know, it's not only brethren, it's all cistern. Charlie Rangel is a convicted tax cheat. People have no problem keeping him in a, winning in a landslide primary. Yeah, right. And our Treasury Secretary was a convicted tax cheat. Yet the Democrats... Oh, are you talking about? Yes. Timothy Guy. Timothy yeah. Guy. And the Democrats who control Congress had no time overwhelming... Yeah. Uh, over I know, but as you know, you know this is, it's this, that's why they call it the silly season. They come out with these ridiculous things that they you know, fire back and forth you know, from one candidate's camp to the other. I mean, the whole thing is ridiculous. But you had said that reasonable people uh, would conclude that Romney has something to hide. No, I'm just based on what, well, it, right, oh, on, that, on the taxes. You're yes. Saying. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying that it's worth obsessing over in terms of what does it mean as, as presidential timber for a candidate like him. I, you know, I don't think it's actually that relevant to how, what kind of a president he would be, you know, because it's not like he's the first individual in the history of the United States to be looking for tax shelters, you know, when they have that much money. Well, that was my point to you when I said he made two years available, which is usually the norm. They don't make 15, 20 years. And reasonable minds, I say, would conclude that if Romney didn't pay taxes for the 10 years that Harry Reid has alleged, the IRS would have said something by now. It's not exactly right. like Romney is flying below the radar. He's a known quantity. And, you know, something like that for the IRS to say nobody's above the law, they would have gotten him right. by now. But, but, I, but I think he himself realized, and his advisors, that it was much better to do what he just did, and that is just come out and say, you know something, I've been paying an average of 13% the last 10 years, okay, let's put an end to it. So, because he didn't want it to look like he was hiding But something. this is now where the second part of my thing on right. his taxes comes in. And this in. has already been five minutes on taxes. But okay, it, the, the misinformation campaign. And by the way, we're now deep in the heart of taxes. Yes, yeah, yes. Right. <laughs> but the misinformation campaign on this, because, of what, because what he paid was taxes on right. his capital gains. Not right. on his income. Yeah, his okay, income, right. he's yeah. still... But again, but that, you know, that's, but, even, that's even more marginal no, to who you're voting for. No, but the, the, the misinformation campaign will say, well, you paid 28% in taxes. Needless his to, secretary, but I, he only paid I don't paid disagree 13, with you. Oh, but he already paid no, taxes know, once on the but money. But that's so much inside baseball stuff. No, who this cares, is tax really? information. I know, but it doesn't... But both sides do this, in a, in a, whether it's a presidential election, you know, a statewide election, a state level, whatever it is. By the way, Harry Reid, who's led the charge on the taxes has never re released any tax returns. I don't know if you knew this. No. He has never released. Right. And he will never answer the question how he became one of the richest men in the Senate on $175,000 right. a year. Right. But you so, know something, Basil? People, yes, people look for tax loopholes. Pe you know, I'll give you another one, and this may seem like what kind of analogy is this, but, uh, you know, I think there is some relevance to it, is that it's in, unfortunately, the innate nature of us to look you know, for little shortcuts and little, 
you know, little white light forms of cheating. It, you know, people think it's funny almost that they would have a cable black box and not pay for cable. Well, you know something? Maybe it's not a physical good. You're stealing something. And if you think you're not, then you're kidding yourself, you know. But people will do things like that. There's a little bit of larceny in all of us. You know? So then we go on here. I say unemployment is climbing. 47 million people are now using food stamps. Yet the story of the day of what are today's poll numbers? Food prices are up 40% since 2009. Yet the story is we have, not, we have a do-nothing Congress. And because of the Obamacare requirements already being implemented, health care costs have gone up, not down, and prescription drug prices have doubled. And then you wait till 2013 when those yeah. taxes come up. Right. Uh, and the, but the story we're being told is that the Republicans don't care. They want to kill Grandma. They wanted to die. Romney's out of touch. And by the way, all this is Bush's fault. And you replied that I was being defensive. Well, what I replied is, uh, again, you think I watch too much cable news, yes, which, which, I is told you. which is probably true. But, you know, recently one of the observations that was made, and by the way, th these types of comments are made not necessarily by, you know, Democratic strategists or operatives always. They're, they're also made by people who are Republicans or Republican strategists or uh, just like somewhat neutral. But, and that is that even Paul Ryan and some of his, uh, you know, fellow uh, uh, legislators in Congress have tried to distance themselves from, from the Bush years. And, and Ryan even said that they were forced to vote as they did by delay and by Hastert because, you know, they were junior legislators and they were being told, this is what you're well, doing. So let me ask you something. This is, you yeah. brought this up. Right. And I asked, you, I, I asked the question, are they distancing themselves? De or? De delay, by the way, who, became, who was convicted. Right. And what uh, about Hastert? Hassan just retired. He, he just retired. retired. Okay. No, he He's retired. clean. Right. Okay. Right. But uh, I said they're not distancing themselves. They're speaking a political truth. They also admit what they did was wrong. Uh, but this, And I pointed out this is why it is very tough from somebody from the legislative branch to get to the executive branch because they have to go along to get along. That was Carrie's yes, problem. Right, Remember right. the flip-flopping? Right. That's why so many of the best candidates are governors, That's right? Or, or, not congressmen. Or, or, or military right. men. Right, right. Most of our president, right. Obama. Well, Obama, was, well, Obama uh, was the first senator since Kennedy, and before Kennedy, you have to go all the way back to Harding, where a president came out of the legislature. Well, then, branch. And then doesn't that mean Eisenhower was the last one, wasn't he? Was the last military, uh, military man. Yeah, right, yes, right. yes, 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 right. yes. Uh, but uh, while we got time, I want to go uh, into the part that really got you going, where you called me partisan. Oh, boy. I can't believe I cursed. Yes. This is where you I made my, my predictions. I wrote this on August 9th. This was before yeah. Ryan was well, chosen. Geez, don't date it. Oh, okay, no, 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 no. I, I want because I don't want people to think I wrote yeah. this after Ron, Romney chose Ryan. Right. I made these predictions before the vice presidential pick right. was made. And I you know, in cyberspace, no one can hear you scream and no one should know what date we during the show. Okay, go ahead. No, I said when I wrote this. So people understood right. Right. that, oh, he's just piling on right. because the with right. Ryan. Well, you know, the journalistic phrase is, at this writing, but go yes. ahead. Anyway, I said that the Republicans will keep Congress, though more of the rhinos, which are Republican in name only, will lose. But more conservatives, whether they be Democrat or Republican, will win. Because I believe... Yeah, and, and what I didn't understand, by the way, which you now can clarify for me, is when you said more, uh, you said more... Uh, conservatives will win more than what? What do you mean? More than are in there now. In other words, the Congress will get even more increasingly conservative. Okay, there'll be an incremental increase in right, conservatives. Right, the big what I said, big government. Right, and you think do you think the country is becoming more conservative? On this point, yes, because they're scared. Remember which the, which point? Good. At this point in time. Oh, at this scared. point. At this point, at this point in, time. in time, they're scared, and when they're scared, they become more conservative. Okay. They don't become more expensive. Listen, isn't the conventional wisdom that at any given point in time, the country is more or less middle of the road, right? No. Actually, at any given point in time, the country is right of center. It is? Yes. Okay. At any given point in time, the left of center is only 20% of the country. But what? Where did yes. you get that number from? The, 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 oh God, and by the way, you know, talk about somewhat abstract concepts. Left of center. I mean, how far left of center? One degree, five degrees, twenty. The 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 opposite of the conservative wing would be the liberal wing or progressive wing because they have to lie about what they stand for. 
Isn't the, that a commercial? The conservative it's an insurance company. The cons people that label themselves conservative make up now thirty five percent of this country. What do you mean label? They're registered conservative. Yes, thirty five percent are registered yes. conservative. Yes, no, and twenty two percent are uh, registered liberal or progressive. This was the Rasmussen poll that was only released two weeks ago. And Rasmussen's What do you mean registered track, liberal or progressive? Well, I mean, there's no other, party called progressive. No, actually you have progressives in other states. Remember, you got to go state by state. You still have liberal parties yeah. in other states. Well, it sounds like it's a perception rather than a real statistic. No, the question was, do you consider yourself liberal, conservative, Yeah, moderate, but and you know how polls go. There's the methodology of right, the responses. Right, and most polls right now that show Obama close to Romney or tied or yeah. ahead of Romney, right. poll 11% more Democrats voting than Republicans. And that hasn't happened since Lyndon Johnson. Well, that's not good for Romney, is it? No, it's not good for Obama. Because you if, just they're, said more if they're saying that 11% more Democrats and, and all uh, uh, Obama can get is within the margin of error of Romney, either ahead or behind, can you imagine when the real uh, uh, percentage of people go out and vote? You haven't had 11% more Democrats voting than Republicans since Johnson's 64 victory. Right. It was the last time. Well, so okay, they're and using that, okay, a forced that, methodology. But anyway... But they're also saying, by the way, and again, you know, some, as you know, you can run these numbers all day long and it doesn't say a darn thing about what's actually going to happen on election day right I'm I mean, isn't you that it's going to happen what, on wait, election day wait a minute but what was in, an interesting a you know factoid a factoid or statisticoid was that in the 50 to 64 age range um, you know Romney doesn't fare well be, because of the whole issue now with Medicaid and people in that age range are concerned when they get you know to be Again, not true. Ron, the Rasmussen poll that came out yesterday. Well, you keep quoting that poll. That's because that Rasmussen poll is the Doesn't one. Doesn't mean it's true or not true. That's but what the Rasmussen poll says. Rasmussen has the most credibility of these polls. Says who? Did they poll somebody to ask which one is more credible? I mean, come on. The news media does uh, that, uh, gives Rasmussen most uh, credit for impartiality. And now you're and now you believe the news media because they gave them more credibility. I think when the enemy acknowledges a fact, it's got to be true. What, the media is the enemy of the Rasmussen? It, no, the ed, media is the enemy of the people. Huh? But you were you, Hendrick we're, 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 you're now quoting Hendrick Ipsen. No, I told you before, your brethren are nothing more than Democrat press agents right now. Why but, do you keep saying my brethren? Because you're part of the media. What? You've oh, been part oh. of the media all your life. Oh, okay. Or as much as your life. Oh, and and the media about. is what? Just one monolithic sensibility? In many ways. No, 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 no. no, no. In many ways. The old media is monolithic, uh, print and TV. The new media, which encompasses cable, the internet. So you're saying all. So you're saying all. Let's take newspapers, right? That old media, obviously. You're saying all newspapers always had the same editorial slant on things, and they all thought the same way. And more like yes. Well, they, what they, about and and the except and at least one glaring exception for many years, which you know, being a political junkie like you are, William Loeb publisher of the Manchester Union Leader in New Hampshire was about as far right as you could possibly be, you're, right? You're naming one right. paper versus the New York Times, the Washington Post, the L.A. Times, the, the all the papers Remember, are record. The New York Post is owned by Rupert Murdoch. No, 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 I said the Washington Post. I know, but I'm just saying the as The New example. York Post was originally a liberal paper. Yes, when, I know that, right. It was only, Dorothy Schiff. Right. One of the pioneers. Right. A, a female publisher, a pioneer in, in business. We're in the digressing United here for a second. Uh, I want to finish with the, with the predictions you blasted me about. I'm, I, I, I'm, I told you that, that uh, Kirsten Gillibrand would lose her Senate seat to Wendy Long. You told me that most people don't know who Wendy Long is. Well, isn't that true? No. It's not true? No, because that's what they said when she was running in the primary, yet she won the primary. Hands down. So you think the incumbent, Kirsten Gillibrand, the Democratic uh, senator from New York, is going to lose? Because of what the special elections in New York this year have told me. The Democrats have yet to win any special elections, even in New York City. And if a Democrat in New York City can't win, it tells you something. And I'll tell you what it tells me. It tells me that even Democrats got to eat. And Democrats need petroleum. And when you have a party, and they're, and they're going to get burnt by Obamacare, too, the Democrats, right. with the taxes. Remember, the Obamacare taxes and, the, and, and this being stalled in the United States Senate, the Bush tax cuts to expire, 
uh, hit New York the worst right. of all the states. Right. New York gets banged the worst. If the Democrats had their way on the uh, on their legislation, uh, saying we're only going to keep the middle class tax cuts, but everybody two hundred fifty thousand dollars or more pays more. Right. New Yorkers get hurt the worst. By the way, we're now at sixteen and a half minutes. This stopwatch is working really well. Well, I understand. <laughs> we're totally ignoring it. No, we it. keep changing topics. But because now we're and, uh, Kristen well, Gillibrand, we're out and, of Congress. And actually, for the next show, I'm going to change tops. Not only okay, that, and I got a stack of stuff for the next show. Yeah, a stack uh, of stuff. Okay. Yes, but no, uh, Wendy, uh, because uh, you're in tough economic times. Even New Yorkers have been known to go Republican. Don't forget, we did have Jacob Javits. We had Alphonse Diamato. And yeah, he, and by and the he way, was Jacob, a conservative. Jacob Javits is, is actually a better convention center than he was even a senator, yes. which says something. But the fact is, we had more times than not in New York, we have had a split Senate representation, one Republican, one Democrat. You very rarely have had what you had now, two senators from the same party. And Kirsten Gillibrand is, is being viewed as just a lackey to uh, Charles Schumer. And uh, without it, because she's renounced every position she ever had. She used to run as a conservative. Yes, I know. Now she's been voted the most by the uh, uh, political, the most liberal member of the Isn't Senate. Isn't she an NRA member? Not anymore. Or she, she was. She, <laughs> she was? She was. Is that what yes. it was? Okay, right. But the one that really. Okay, I, guess, I guess that backfired on her, huh? Apparently right. so. Okay. <laughs> but the one that really got you is when I said Romney wins this 55 to 45 with New York going Republican. Yeah, that, I mean, you're, talking about you? a 10 point, you're talking about a 10 point margin. And by the way, can I just say something, you know, uh, sort of a grammar geek kind of thing? It's not a 10% margin when it's 55 45. You know, people make that mistake. Right, 10 it's point. a 10 percentage point margin. Okay. Right. No, and I and you when you said there, I had no rational basis to say that other than partisanship. Isn't that what you accused me of? You yes, it is was, absolutely. And I said I can well, argue this rationally. Okay. That history has shown that New York is not afraid to vote for a Republican. But, but and, what I, and what I said in my comment uh, is that again, maybe I'm ingesting too much external information and opinion, but that I've heard even Republicans think that New York's a lost cause. In, in, in These the are the same Republicans that I replied to you with that did not see the Republicans picking up five congressional seats only two years ago. Right. They are so out of touch with their base. Well, that, that's not very encouraging in a presidential election that you know, they're New out York, of touch with their base. Because they're more in, in, uh, interested in being in touch with themselves. You can bring out the chicken now. Yeah, right. But okay, no, well, no, no. That's uh, the next show. Anyway, but they, they're, they're, they're just cementing their seat of power. They would rather right, and as have as, power. As you've, as, as, as you've written many times, both parties. Yes. All politicians. Right, right? but there, right. right now you have Republicans in New York that would rather be in power as a second tier party. Yes. Then be out of party, be, at, be out of power. At the federal level. At the federal level, okay. then be out of power at the uh, and be the majority party if it meant them being right. out of power. Okay. That's, right. But what I said to you is that both Nixon and Reagan took New York. Right. When tough economic times. Even the poor got to eat. Even those on food stamps need that food stamp dollar. Right. To stretch. Right. And like I said, food is up 40%. Gas is $1.85. Now it's $4 again. Right. The man at the top gets to blame the, whether it's right or wrong. Right. The man at the top. Meaning the president. Oh, okay. Him. Right. Or her in some future administration. And by the way, we'll have to wait to the, the next show. I'm going to wear these things again, which you never asked me why I'm impersonating Dennis You've got a minute. Why I'm impersonating why. Dennis Rod? Well, it's just that, you know how some people wear their heart on their sleeve? Well, I wear it on my wrist. And these are all different causes that I support uh, and believe in and... One is Save a Life, which is helping at-risk uh, young people. Autism Speaks. Um, Augie's, you know, they just did a, a golf benefit for Autism we Speaks. We got the circle. Okay, and we got anyhow. So go ahead, wrap Those it up. Those are my opinions. You may beg to differ. And when Bruce the Blog listens, people talk. See you next time. Wait till you see this conversation online. He promised to do this. Yeah, that's right. The, the column is what it means. Right. Right.